Hey, what's going on there guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene and today we're gonna to be talking about getting the biggest yield you possibly can with the smallest space that you have. But first, show us some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, be sure to join our VIP Patreon program for tips, monthly giveaways, live streams, all that good stuff. We're actually gonna be giving away $1,000 worth of ILGM beans on November 1st and on November 15th, right before their Black Friday sale. So be sure to get in on that. Link will be in the description below. And also, don't forget, if you wanna come and sesh with us, check out our grows and just chill with us. Follow us on Instagram. A link to that will also be in the description below. So I'm really going to try my hardest to get through this video. I'm super baked right now. I just wanted to everybody know that right now. So hopefully I'm not repeating anything, you know? What do you say? Nothing? Nothing. For once, you have nothing to say. Yeah. I didn't think it was gonna be that easy. So today, we're gonna be talking about getting bigger yields in smaller spaces, and we can joke all we want, but I think I'm going to be the perfect candidate to make this video, okay? You know, growing in a bathroom for the last two years and all, I mean, <laughs> We grew the GDPs, we grew the blue cheese, the gelato, we got the big bud in there, which, by the way, that came out really amazing. We grew the Master Kush, the Gorilla Glue, and let's not forget the Skittles Auto. That was an absolute beast. You guys remember that, right? We had some pretty sweet yields. I still have a ton of the GDP, still got a little gelato and blue cheese left over. I mean, we got a lot of flowers, and if I can do it, trust me, you can too. Just trying to show you guys that you can grow in a bathroom if you want, you know? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, right? You don't really need a crazy amount of room. I mean, I mean, yeah, you kind of do. It totally helps, but if you only have a little bit of space that you can work with, don't think that you can't do it. That's just a bunch of BS right there. What did you say? I said yeah. So, hold on. You had nothing to say before, but now you got something to say. Yeah. Okay. See, women always change their minds about everything, right? All right, so I'm not gonna lie here. If you're trying to grow in a smaller space, you definitely got your work cut out for you. You gotta improve the efficiency and maintain the efficiency of your environment. Dealing with humidity is probably my biggest issue, but we still somehow made it work. Training is also a big pain, okay? It's not like you can just set up a trellis net and just weave your plants in and out. I had to tie down my plants every few days, maybe like every three or four days, and it might not sound like a lot of work, work until you actually get in there and do it every couple of days and if you're busy and you have a lot of other stuff you got to do it's, it gets kind of annoying you know also guys if you do want to see pictures and some clips of my past grows the stuff that I mentioned a little bit earlier be sure to be following us on Instagram we have lots and lots of photos of our past grows so let's go over some stuff that you got to know when you're growing in small spaces so you can get the most out of your plants let's start with lighting because I mean it lives everything lives and dies based on the lighting in the environment, right? Make sure to look into LEDs that run a little bit cooler. Look at reviews. You know, a lot of people leave reviews like on Amazon. You know, there's a lot of reviews on multiple sites you could check out. So make sure you check out all the reviews before you even think about getting the light that, you know, that you're going to be running with. And if you're wondering, Mars Hydro Lights do not run cool. So I'm just kind of throwing that one out there. I was actually running some tests on the ES300 and it seems to be running a little cooler than the Mars lights did. Temps seem to be staying like around in the 70s. Now, as far as light intensity, it doesn't really matter unless you're bending your branches, which of course requires some room. So make sure all of your flowering sites have access. I'm not I'm not big on defoliation. I know some people love defoliating. I, you know, I know a lot of people really dig it, but me, not really. I just cut the leaves only if I have to. I generally try to push the leaves back just so my flowering sites are gonna be able to access the light I'm giving it. So create a canopy and you should be fine. Next is making your plants do some actual work. Now, what I mean is, you know, topping, high stress training, heck, low stress training, that sort of thing. Of course, I'm talking about photo periods here. You know, that's what we're gonna be running now we've been running the autos for maybe three years or so so I kind of want to change. If you want your plants to thrive, make them work harder by cutting off the resources. When you top, you're making your plants produce more colas. When you're bending your plants, you know, doing your LST, that's shorthand for low stress training work, you're making your plants push their way up to get to the light. When you're super cropping or breaking your plant, 
that that is literally what you're doing. You know, they have to actually work to recover. I know they form a knuckle and they will recover, but they gotta actually do the work themselves to recover. So just keep that in mind. And you know what, it's like humans. We work harder and harder every day to achieve what we're looking to achieve. It's like that with your plants. Next is something I've already made a video on last week, but I'm still gonna talk about it some more, and that is your root health, not you. I'm talking about your plant's root health. I hope nobody made that confusion. If you want big yields, you need a healthy root system. Now, without a healthy root system, you got nothing coming, all right? Make sure you're using the right nutrients for the stage your plants are in. That makes sense, right? Trust me, some people do not get this part. They don't need phosphorus and veg, and they don't need nitrogen and flour. So just make sure that you're giving them what they need. Now, let's not misconstrue this. I'm not saying they don't need any nitrogen at all. Maybe a little bit helps during the first few weeks of flour. Hour, but you get what I'm trying to say. So the point I'm trying to make is give your plants the nutrients they need when they need it. I know a lot of people love to get trigger happy when applying nutrients into their feed, so yeah. Next tip is knowing when to stop. You're probably wondering, what are you talking about? And what I mean by that is you gotta plan out when you're gonna go into flowering. Pay close attention to your plant's growth and pay attention to how much room you got left. I know, I get it. You wanna grow the biggest plant you possibly could, but don't do what I did with the Skittles, okay? If if you guys remember following that series on IG, she was growing halfway out of my closet. Like, I had to keep the door completely open. I think I have those, I think I still have those pictures still on IG if you're interested. I mean, it is pretty funny, but not funny to the person that's actually growing it. I know not every strain is gonna have that final stretch, but get that thought out of your head right away and expect that all your plants are gonna have a huge final stretch. Better to be safe than sorry. So the bottom line here is to maintain your environment environment, like I said earlier, make sure you know the lights that you're using, like so they're not super hot. Make sure you know when to stop when you're training your plants and you should have a super nice grow, whether you're growing in a closet or, you know, growing in a bathroom like I've been doing for the last three years. Oh, actually, I think it was two years. I'm not gonna lie though, I definitely like the four by four foot tent that I got. It just, it just seems like it's gonna be a lot more organized. There's nothing organized about doing a closet grow or doing a bathroom grow. It just, it just sucks, you know? what I'm saying? You're literally growing your plants in a place you're gonna be taking a shower in or even in the closet. Like there's generally not enough room in a closet unless you're growing in a walk-in closet and that's a little bit different. But then you have to keep that door open constantly because if you close it, it's just it's just gonna be too much stagnant air. It's just annoying, you know? I feel like I'm rambling right now. I'm pretty baked right now. So I, I don't know. I don't even know where this video is headed right now. But anyway, like I said before, not everyone has a house where they can grow. You know, some people just, they just don't have the room you have to grow in smaller spaces there are people like us that do live in apartments everyone has different situations so just always be cool always be chill you know what I mean all right guys so I feel like we covered a ton of stuff about growing in smaller spaces but before I close off today's video I want to thank everyone on screen for supporting us on patreon since February I really appreciate this love and support guys so I'm gonna close off today's video be sure to drop a fat thumbs up drop that fat like and subscribe if you're not resubscribed and I'll catch you guys in the next one and as always, stay safe. Peace.